In this session, I'm going to go over using styles in a document. Styles in Word 2016 are a powerful tool that can help you provide consistency throughout the document by applying the same properties throughout the document as you're formatting it, as well as save you time. So how do you apply styles? All you have to do is you select the section of your document here, and let's assume that we want to make this heading number one. So simply click on heading number one here. And by the way, these are the list of styles here. Notice you have a drop down as well here to see the other styles in the document. Now this feature here of you holding the mouse on the text here, this is called the live preview. It gives you a preview of what it would look like if you were to select that option before you even click on it. So let's assume that we want this for heading number one. So we basically go throughout the document here and you apply the different styles for this particular document. Now, my suggestion is that uh, you apply heading one, heading two, and heading three styles and so on throughout the document. The reason for that is that later, if it, you have a long document, you can also create a table of contents directly from the styles that you apply throughout your document. And the table of contents will be generated only if you have heading one and so on styles. Now, if you don't like how something looks like at this point, what you can do is that we'll go and modify the style to your liking, and then that will be updated throughout the document automatically. So basically, you don't like something, you can tweak the heading one style, but you need the heading one style to create the table of contents later. I'll also show you how to create custom styles from scratch here in a moment. You get the idea here. We go, we apply the heading styles throughout the document, depending on the layout and the organization of your document. So for example, this would be heading one, this would be heading two, and then you scroll down in your document and you apply the other heading. So this, let's assume it will be heading number three. You could even apply this as a heading number four. Let's assume that's heading number two. Now notice here we have the technical underpinnings and then we have the development plan and then we have the essential information protection that probably falls under what we covered earlier. So you do that throughout your document. Now one thing to keep in mind here is that, like I mentioned earlier, if I wanted to change how heading number two looks like, and notice if I click here, it shows heading number two, that's the one selected. To modify a specific style, I have two options. I could simply either customize the text here the way I want it. So for example, I want this to be larger. And uh, let's say I want that to be bold. And then I want this to go all the way to the left here. Notice I can go here since I have the ruler showing. And if you don't have the ruler, you can go under view and choose ruler here. Notice it shows up or it disappears. Go here to the home tab and I'm going to move this to the left so that my text is all the way in the left. Now we are kind of deviating what we are trying to do to explain here as far as the, the heading one style. But basically we're tweaking this the way we like it to be showing up. And then I'm going to make this, let's say, orange color. So it kind of stands out for us. And uh, let's say I want the font to be a different font. Let's say I want the Calibri here, and I want that to be 20 points. Now what you can do is, now that I have tweaked heading one here the way I like it, I can simply select it. And you can right click on the heading style up here, and it says update heading one to match selection. We're telling the computer to update any heading one styles wherever we have applied them and even though we have not applied them yet to be however we chose this to look. We click here and update and now notice if I scroll down we'll find out here that wherever I applied here for example it was heading one that has been updated and notice in the other options as well. Now if I wanted to update heading number two I could do the same thing. I could simply highlight this change the font and let's say I want to make that blue designing however I like it and then I can choose to update it 
And now notice if I scroll down throughout the document here, you'll see that heading two has been updated to what we chose earlier. Now, let's say that we still want to tweak this. We want to make it underlined or whatever. What you can do is you can select it, go under heading two, choose modify, and then notice you can just change properties. So again, you can modify this two different ways. You can either tweak it first and then update it. I think that's the easiest one. Or you can simply right click and then tweak with all kinds of other properties here as well. So you can change, for example, I want it underlined, I press this, it will be underlined. You can also change the formatting, the border, the frame, the numbering, text effects, and all kinds of other stuff, and you can tweak uh, that on your own. Just remember, if you change it, you need to also update it automatically as well. You click OK, and now if we scroll up or down here, which wherever this was applied in the document, it will be automatically updated with the underlining. Same thing with uh, heading number three. So we'll go and find the heading number three wherever we applied it. So this is, for example, heading number four. Typically, you can't use heading number four until you have used heading three. But um, in any case, I think heading number three is this one right here. So you can tweak this however you want it again. and then simply right click, update heading three to match selection, and that will update all instances. Let's say we want to do this as well. Update heading four, and now it has been applied throughout the document. So using the styles, it's a very powerful feature and strongly recommended because it will save you time and it will provide consistency throughout the document. Now let's assume that you wanted to create a new style of some sort. So. Uh, let's say anywhere in the document, I want uh, a new type of style. Again, you can customize it the way you want. Let's make it something completely different here. And now what you can do is you can select this and you could click on styles here in the, on the mini toolbar or you can click on the drop down here on the top under the styles area and you have an option to create a new style so you can just give it a name let's say Sully and then click OK now if I want to apply this wherever I want it applied I can simply go and apply the Sully style If I wanted to tweak it, I could simply either tweak it from here and update it, or I can tweak it from the top and, and modify it over here. That's how cool styles are. Strongly suggested that you use them in your documents because it's very powerful in creating also the table of contents and it will save you time and provide consistency throughout the document.